My name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Here what you see is the Karayan 2. Now, at the end of last episode, uh, we had left this with its engines hobbled, connected to Minmus Station. Before people get too confused, I will draw attention to the fact that if you look down there towards the bottom left, you will see that there is a timer going, and that is because I am in Kerbal Construction Times Simulation Mode. This is actually not really the Karayan 2 that's in orbit around Mimis. It's still there. Uh, this is an identical one that I just brought up in the Vehicle Assembly Building, and I am testing it to try and figure out what is going on with its nuclear engines. You may recall from last episode that these KSP Interstellar Extended Nerva engines suddenly stopped working last episode. Uh, the reactors in them just weren't producing any thermal energy at all, and they rely on thermal energy in order to propel the propellant <laughs> out of the back and create thrust, and I couldn't produce any sort of measurable or negligible, it was all negligible thrust that I could produce and certainly nothing that would make it effective and I I left it just docked with the station figuring I'll figure this out later so this is part of figuring it out later so I just have this thing and I'm just running the engines on full and I'm looking at all the data and I'm trying to see if there's anything out of the ordinary going on and there absolutely isn't. I'm getting plenty of thrust uh, heat is being managed very, very well. I'm getting no issues at all. And I basically have come to the conclusion that the engines on the actual Corian are bored. I'll just leave it at that. They, they just don't work. There's something wrong with them. I can't figure out. It's probably some sort of internal bug. Uh, and I think I'm just going to officially just kind of give up on the Corian too. So what that ended up resulting in is me producing a Corian 3 which looks not like this it's not based on the homegrown rocket parts like this one is it's going to be based on the mark 1 orbital lab extension part or the mole parts this is a new mod that I've installed uh, comes with a lot of parts that in some ways overlap with homegrown rockets but have a very different look to them they're based more around the aesthetic of the mark 1 uh, capsule that you get early on in the stock parts and so it'll be a very different looking Karai one but functionally very much the same but that's going to take a while to build it's got all kinds of new parts in it uh, in the meantime I gotta mount a rescue mission to get my four Kerbals that are in orbit around Minmus back so for that I'm going to be refurbishing the Karayan one which we uh, just docked with also, last episode, and we need to be back to Kerbin Station so that we can make some improvements to it. You'll be seeing that in this particular episode. But before we get to that, uh, there was something else that I sort of left in low Kerbin orbit uh, towards the end of last episode. This is JunkSat N. Well, actually, it's really JunkSat N and JunkSat N plus one because it's actually two probes connected to each other that I plan to split off in just a moment. And the reason why they're called JunkSat N is because I've completely lost track of my JunkSat numbers uh, because it's been a little while since I've done one of these insert a satellite into an orbit type of mission. So I thought I'd build this uh, sort of two-in-one type of deal. So the lower probe just runs on monoprop. It's uh, got these uh, four linear RCS stick anywhere type of thrusters. So I am actually uh, thrusting right now by holding down the H key rather than using the shift throttle up type of key. Uh, the only downside of all of this is that Kerbal Engineer gets completely confused and can't give me any useful data as far as delta v or thrust or anything like that but i think my calculations are all right it seems to be working fine and then the upper probe runs on liquid fuel and oxidizer on one of those little ant engines and the orbit that this is going to be inserted to there's actually two orbits that's why uh i have two probes here uh the first one here is this blue one which is an equatorial prograde orbit and then i also have this one in green that is, uh, as you can see, a higher altitude, but also inclined, but in a retrograde direction. And I thought, let's do a little bit of an experiment here. I'm not sure at all if this is going to work. Let's launch one craft that I can set on my lunar injection and then split it 
and then adjust the course of the second satellite, Junksat M plus 1, so it will go to the green orbit, and then uh, they'll both get to the moon's sphere of influence at roughly the same time, hopefully not perfectly at the same time. That could be interesting if that happened. And then we'll insert them both, and hopefully I'll be able to finish off two contracts with one. Um, I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but uh, we'll have to see. We're about 2,500 kilometers above the curb and surface now, and I'm just uh, tweaking my trajectory of my probe here. That looks pretty good. So now comes time to separate these two and adjust the trajectory of Junksat N plus 1. Ooh, I wonder if that ejection force messed things up. Let's check our trajectory. That still looks, that still looks pretty good. Uh, let's go to... Junksat N here and make sure that it is still oh yeah it's fine oh it's it's perfect uh, yeah okay it didn't look like its trajectory got it got affected at all so we'll use alarm clock and we'll set up an alarm for when it crosses into its sphere of influence and then we'll go over to Junksat N plus one and we'll engage its engine and get ready to adjust its trajectory uh oh I have almost no fuel why? Oh my gosh! Like, there's just like, it dribbles left there. It's just on fumes. Oh man. You know what must have happened is, this was dropped off by my space shuttle, the Columbia, last episode, and as the Columbia was circular, doing its final circularization, it must have been using the fuel from this tank here. That's why you have the disable crossfeed option on your talking ports. Oh man. Oh well. Uh well, at the very least, I do have enough fuel left to adjust my trajectory to crash into the moon. But as far as an experiment goes, this is the worst kind of result. This is a no result. I don't know if this would have worked or not. Oh, that's too bad. And I'll obviously have to build another junk sat and send it out here to do the other mission. Uh, the first one, though, should be fine for its insertion, and we'll see that towards the end of this particular episode. But why don't we uh, get over to the Karayan? And here we have Bob and Luya and Chris Nick, who last episode took up a Kuryu's, rendezvoused with the Karayan, and are now taking both vessels over to Kerbin Station. And we're just closing in on Kerbin Station now. And then the plan is going to be to... Uh, fuel up the Karayan and send it out towards Minmus. But I do have one issue that the Karayan has a max crew of four, and there are four people out at Minmus. Now, it does have a pro body. Technically, I could send it out uncrewed, but I don't know. What fun is that, right? And I kind of want to do some upgrades, some refurbishments, some renovations to the Karayan. I want to increase its living space. And I also want to add a lab module. And I happen to have a lab module connected to the station, a spare one that I left there on purpose a few episodes ago because I, I was talking about doing this. I was doing some major construction and now it's kind of forcing my hand that I really do have to do that. Now the first thing though, what we got to do is we got to get the couriers. We'll dock that with the station first. Okay, and undock. I don't have anybody in the Kuryu's. Oops, I'm on the Kuryan. There we go. There's the Kuryu's. Uh, I don't have anybody in it, but it does have a pro body, so it can fly autonomously. So we'll we'll snuggle that over there. And actually, we'll, oh, show off the uh, camera focus changer mod again. I really like this. You know, you don't. You can even change focus to other vessels. So here, I'll change the focus to the docking port that's on the space station. Change the view of this docking just a little bit. I really do like the mod. I mean, it's practical just for finding parts and focusing on parts on large vessels, but it's also kind of fun to change the perspective. So here, instead of seeing sort of the station coming towards us, which you normally see when you're doing docking, we're seeing the Kuryu's coming towards the station. But anyway, once the Kuryu's was docked, of course, then it was the Karayan's turn. And once we get the Karayan docked, it's time to get to work. Our first job is going to be to do some crew transferring. So Louie and Bob, our scientists, we're just going to get them into the station, kind of get them out of the way for now. For the work we're ahead, we do not need scientists. And we're going to move Tamley from the station into the Karayan because we're going to need a pilot, as you'll see in just a little bit.
And uh, we'll start off with Bartner. Bartner's in the station. He's our station engineer. And he's going to go out there and we're going to get ready to do some work. And this first job is going to be to take one of these empty KAS storage containers and uh, attach this temporarily up to the Karayan. So it'll be sort of a part box for us so we can use this to store our parts. And uh, what I want to do, first job before I start attaching on a new module, is I, will, I do want to attach this science parts permanently to the Karayan. I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. So I'm going to lose that as attached through a docking port. I want to attach it permanently. So we're going to start ripping off all of these various science parts and storing them into the container. And Bartner's going to need some help. So we'll go Chris Nick here and we'll undock the Karayan. And uh, I want to attach the materials bay right to the end there, but this docking port and probe body are in the way. So we're going to remove those. And then we're going to take this materials bay and just sort of stick it on here. Uh, yeah, I sort of struggled with this a little bit until I remembered that if you press R, it changes the attachment node. Excellent. And now it's time for the big job. It's time to see if we can attach that orbital module on. Now this orbital module was formerly from one of the Kerr uses that I just simply detached it and uh, left it attached to the station here and then descended the Kerr use. This is a few episodes ago. And then uh, I left it here with the express purpose that uh, I wanted to take a shot at attaching it to the Karayan. It's also, by the way, loaded with scientific data too. So I do want to get some scientists in there doing some research. Now what I've done here is I've once again used the camera focus changer and I'm focused in on the front of the Karayan rather than its center of mass. And I have also targeted the docking port that's at the bottom of the uh, orbital module where it's attached to the station. And that way I'm able to line this all up perfectly so that I can get out one of my engineers to perform the, de the deed of attaching it across. Now the simpler thing to do would be to put a docking port on this thing and then connect it with some docking ports. And then I could even use some struts to sort of shore it up, but I don't know. I wanted to try seeing if I could just attach it you know, properly without docking ports and not use docking ports to this, see how it goes. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's get out Christic. Now I'm pretty sure this is going to be too heavy for one Kerbal to work with, but we'll give it a go. Equip his electric screwdriver and send them down there. And if this ends up not working, then I will just put some docking ports here and just connect it using docking ports, but I wanted to give this a go. I also rotated the Karayan, so the hatches, yep, too heavy. So it takes 1.4 Kerbals to lift this thing, but thankfully I've got Bartner around. So we'll send Bartner out as well. By the way, the second person doesn't have to be an engineer. You need an engineer to do the attaching and detaching, but the helper Kerbals can be of any uh, class. I just figured, well, Bartner and Chris Nick have been doing all this work and uh, I don't want to take that away from them at this point. Okay. Oh, still too heavy. Okay, Chris Nick must not be close enough. So let's uh, switch over to Chris Nick. There he is, and we'll just, we'll just let go and I'll just drift him downwards towards where we're going. Make sure he's not in the way of uh, where it's going to be once it's hopefully attached. All right, Bartner, let's let's do this. Got to do this quickly before Chris Nick gets too far away. Okay, so well he's moving it, so that's good. Oh 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 oh, patch, come on there. It was there. Come on. Ah, what? There, go. Yes, yes, that's awesome. All right, now. All I got to do now is put on this docking port. There we go. Let's go around here. And there is a little probe body. I got to get that out of there first. This is where I hide the probe body for my, my crew uses. And then we'll put on the docking port. You might have been noticing there is a lot of cuts <laughs> in this. Uh, I'm not subjecting to you you to how long this actually all took me this whole a lot of playing around and adjusting there we go it's not perfect but I just wanted to get it on there 
and then we can fine tune it later. Like as I was, as I was just saying, uh, there was a lot of uh, this took much longer than I think this video is making it appear like it is, but I'm pretty happy here with the final product. This is looking pretty good. There's still some uh, fine tuning that needs to get done, but what we can do is we can get Chris Nick here inside because the rest of this just requires a single engineer, nothing, no heavy lifting. And we'll back off the Corian here a little bit. And let's get rid of the docking alignment indicator. We'll just start it drifting backwards just slightly so that we don't have to worry about it n bumping into the station. And then we'll get Bartner here. And he's got some, uh, some adjusting to do. Uh, one of the things he's got to do is start taking off these extra RCS blocks. Uh, don't need these anymore. Then we'll start attaching on some lights. I'm really pleased with this. Uh, even the lights, the color of the lights, the green and the red, line up uh, with the attached orbital module. I didn't have to move the green lights and the red lights on the orbital module. That's great. And then we'll uh, put some science back onto this thing and then do some final adjusting on the docking port. Okay, so we'll just let it go here on the side. It's not attached. You can see it's starting to drift away already. And we'll stick it on here. And I want to rotate it. I want to rotate it so it lines up with the command module. I've been doing a little testing as to which way to rotate. And you can hold shift, and that gives you fine rotation, just like in the VAB. That's looking pretty good. And then I want to just eyeball centering it unfortunately uh, Bartner is drifting which means that everything is drifting so that's making it a little bit trickier there there that looks good okay let's let's uh, see how well this lines up so we'll get back here we are to the Korean one and we'll control from the command module here and what I'm looking at is the nav ball, and then I'm going to control from the docking part and watch the nav ball. And it just barely moved, hardly moved at all. So that's going to do me great. All right. So all we got left to do is now dock the Korion for real. We'll do a little bit of crew rotation. We'll make sure to put that toolbox. <laughs> that KIS toolbox back at the station where it belongs, and then we'll stock up the Corine with life support and fuel and monopropellant, and we'll send it on its way to Minmus. And I've decided the crew for this mission is going to be Tamley and Chrisnik. Neither of those two have ever been to Minmus before, so it'll be good experience for them. We'll leave Bartner here on the station, as well as Bob and Luya. Again, I gotta leave four empty seats in order to bring our Minmus crew back. Okay, oh. Oh, we just bounced off there. Now let's push, push back in again. But we are not docking, and it looks like I am perfectly lined up here. Yep. Let's try this one more time. But they are not. There is no magnetic seal. They're not coming together here. Okay. Uh, well, it turned out that it was the same story at a different docking port. So something is up with this particular docking port. I don't know what the issue is. But I've decided I'm going to uh, deal with it at some other time. I, I want to still send these folks out to Minmus. There are other docking ports out on Minmus Station as well. I could I could still fix this thing out there. So I, I, I was just eager to get this thing on the road. So I ended up connecting it using a KAS fuel pipe and transferring over the resources this way. You can see there is a little bit of a kind of a wobble happening but not it's not too dangerous. It seems to be okay. Sometimes you have to be careful when you start connecting together large vehicles with these flimsy connections like these fuel pipes. But it's hanging on. You also might notice the uh, top menu there is the amount of fuel that's in the orange tank, which is all the fuel that's in the station. You'll notice that the liquid fuel is getting low. I still have a ton of oxidizer. That's because the Corian 2 doesn't use oxidizers, so I've been using them at different rates. But uh, 
there is not enough fuel left in the station to fill this vehicle another time so I will have to start thinking about getting up a fuel barge in the future but for now there is enough fuel so once we got back our parked crate here there was really nothing left to keep us from heading off to Minmus. Real Plume once again giving us our engine effects. Really nice. You probably noticed or may have noticed at the beginning of the video when I was showing the uh, interstellar Nerva engines that they didn't have this real plume effect of, of you know, behaving like they're in a vacuum. Um, I'm leaving it with the interstellar engine effects for now, mostly because I'm having so much trouble with those engines, the last thing I want to do is start getting in and mucking about with config files. Uh, maybe that might just mess them up even more, so if they're working, I'm just going to leave them. But anyway, it's going to be a while, another 10 days before these folks get to Minmus, and then of course it's going to be about the same amount of time for them to get back. So that'll give me some time to get and do some other things that don't involve these Kerbin system runabouts. Uh, one of which was, well, at the beginning of this particular video, I sent a probe out towards the moon, and actually just before I started this burn, that probe had gotten itself into the moon's sphere of influence. And it is just now time warping down to its periapsis, where we will perform our insertion burn and finish off this contract. Now I'm using the remote tech flight computer to hold it on the maneuver node because it just wobbles like crazy if I don't do that. But I'm going to be executing the node manually because again I'm using RCS thrusters so I'm pressing H instead of uh, throttling up in order to provide any thrust and I am almost for sure that the uh, flight computer won't be able to do that for me. Oh, oh, that was a little bit too early. Oh, that went down quicker than I thought it would. Here we go. This will go. And I'm just going to thrust until my contract requirements that are in the contract plus window there go green. And then this contract has been put to bed. Oh my gosh, this is two videos ending with a contract being completed. Perhaps progress is being made after all. Maybe this will be the start of a trend. More contracts being polished off one by one. But those contracts are going to have to be for future videos. Until then, I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.